Buttonholes are usually the last step in the garment making process and if they don't turn out perfect, well, it can definitely ruin the entire mood. Luckily, there are quite a few things that you can do to create beautiful buttonholes. This video is created in partnership with Organ Needles, needle industry experts. Let's get started with tip number one is using interfacing. So this is probably the most important part is that you always have to use interfacing on the part where you want to add buttonhole. Now usually buttonholes are added on button plackets like this one and the entire pattern detail has to be interfaced on the wrong side of the garment. However, if you're adding buttonholes somewhere else in the garment on the pattern detail which will not be fully interfaced, you have to take a little piece of fusible interfacing which would be a bit Bit larger than your buttonhole and add it to the wrong side of the garment. This way the fabric will be stabilized and you will be able to sew a much neater buttonhole and as an additional plus the buttonhole will serve longer because it will not be as prone to stretching out or fraying. You also have to put fusible interfacing when you're working with knit garments but in this case I recommend going for stretch interfacing interfacing so that it correlates with the stretch of your garment. Adding interfacing to the buttonhole placement has a massive impact, so I highly recommend doing it. Tip number two is use stabilizer. Now, even though you are stabilizing the fabric with fusible interfacing, sometimes, especially if you're working with delicate fabrics, if the fabric is knit, it likes to stretch out, using just interfacing may not be enough. And in this case, what you want to do is you want to take either a tear away or water soluble stabilizer. Just a teeny tiny piece and slip it under the presser foot under the fabric where you want to add the buttonhole. In this way, while making the buttonhole, the fabric will be stabilized more and it will be fed through the feed dogs more equally, thus creating a more beautiful buttonhole. Once the buttonhole is finished, you either rip away the tear away uh, stabilizer or wash away the water soluble stabilizer. But again, these stabilizers have to be used used along with fusible interfacing. Tip number three is try different threads. Now usually we are sewing using polyester all-purpose thread and while it works great, if you switch to cotton thread which is a little bit more woolly, you will get a more fuller buttonhole effect. Additionally, you can try using embroidery threads. Now compared to standard sewing thread, embroidery thread has a little bit more shine, a little bit more gloss and when used on decorative stitches or in our case on buttonholes, it also adds a little touch of luxury. You can also try using top stitching thread or a heavy duty thread. Now for this, I do recommend to switch to top stitching needle. Now this needle compared to standard universal needle size 90 has a much larger hole. Not only this makes the needle easier to thread but it also makes it possible to sew with thicker thread or multiple threads. Top stitching needle is very often used when doing quilt stitches with thicker thread, when sewing decorative stitches, sewing with multiple threads or even doing embroidery. So in our case, if we switch to the top stitching needle, thread it with a thicker thread and sew a buttonhole, we get a more filled buttonhole, which at least for me, it looks very beautiful. And using thicker thread will work very well when you're sewing medium to heavier weight fabrics. Additionally, if you do not have a top stitching thread, if you do not have a, a thicker thread in the desired color, you can try pairing two threads and just threading the top stitching needle with both threads at the same time. So for a comparison, here is the example of how the buttonhole looks with one thread and here is the buttonhole made with two threads. 
so you can definitely see a big difference. Alternatively, you can also use the same method with embroidery threads and feed two threads through the same top stitching needle. Tip number four is you always have to test your buttonholes before sewing it on the final garment. Now, if you're using a computerized sewing machine to sew your buttonholes, once you select the buttonhole stitch, it already sets the sewing machine to the determined parameters. However, in many cases, you still want to do a little bit of customization to either make a longer stitch or maybe a wider or na more narrow zigzag. Every fabric is different, every thread is different, every pattern and design is different. This is why you really want to play with the settings to get the type of buttonhole that fully, fully fulfills your needs. So this buttonhole is made using preset stitch settings, while this buttonhole is made with a few adjustments because I reduced the stitch length and you can see that the result is a bit fuller buttonhole. When testing your buttonhole, I do recommend testing it on the same fabric that you will be using to create your garment. Not only that, but you want to make sure that the grain of the fabric is facing the same direction how you will be sewing the buttonhole. Because sometimes fabric can stretch out in one direction more than it does on the other. So if you do test out the stitch on the direction that it stretches out, it may not necessarily be ideal setting for another direction which stretches out less. And also you might want to test out the stitch on several different layers depending on how many layers you will be using to sew your buttonhole on. I know that testing buttonholes may not be the most exciting thing ever, but for me personally, I'd rather test the buttonhole before sewing it on the final garment because ripping away the buttonhole stitch is really not a pleasant task, so best to test it before sewing it on the final garment. So tip number five is try different shapes of buttonholes. Now, if you have a computerized sewing machine, usually it is equipped with several types of different buttonholes that you can use for the project. For example, it may have a rounded buttonhole, which looks so beautiful and it will look especially nice when sewing coats or jackets. If you do have embroidery machine, one recommendation that I can give you is to try the embroidered buttonholes. Now, these buttonholes can be so gorgeous and so beautiful and they can be the center of your design. So I made this particular buttonhole using a metallic thread. Metallic thread looks absolutely beautiful, especially on buttonholes, but it has one nuance that it's quite tricky to sew or embroider with. So to solve this, I used Organ Needle's metal embroidery needle. Same as top stitching needle, metal embroidery needle has a larger eye. Now because of the larger eye, once the needle is feeding through the fabric, it gives less stress to the thread and thus the thread breaks way, way less than using a standard needle. Embroidered buttonholes can be so, so beautiful. So if you have embroidery machine, this is definitely something I recommend giving a try. Tip number six is trying corded buttonholes. Now, corded buttonhole is created by taking either a thicker thread or a cord and feeding it through the buttonhole presser foot. When the machine is doing the buttonhole stitch, it locks one thread or cord inside one edge and then the other side of the cord in another side of the buttonhole in the zigzag stitches. So for one thing, this creates a more dimensional buttonhole and it creates a very, very beautiful effect, especially if you're working with heavier weight fabrics such as coats or jackets. Also, it can be used as a reinforcement, especially if you're working with knit fabrics and you don't want the buttonhole to stretch out, you can use a heavy weight thread and add it to the buttonhole and in this way it will not stretch out as easily because the cord inside of the buttonhole will be supporting its shape. Corded buttonholes usually do take a little bit of practice but the result is very beautiful and definitely worth the effort. 
Tip number seven is cutting the buttonholes. So there are three most popular ways how to cut the buttonhole. The most popular way is using a seam ripper, but I have to tell you, I do not use this method. So my current favorite method is using a buttonhole cutter. I have a set of buttonhole cutter, a very tiny mat which you slip under the buttonhole and also it came with the eyelet uh, tool which is helpful when pressing the keyhole buttonholes. Using this tool it's very easy to quickly and very neatly cut through the buttonholes. And second way that I like to use and what I use mostly prior to getting the buttonhole cut was using very very sharp embroidery scissors. They are very tiny but they are very very sharp and they are able to get even to the tiniest corners making it very easy to effectively cut through buttonholes. Tip number eight is about calculating the size of the buttons. So usually it's quite easy to calculate the size because if you're using a standard button, you can just simply open the back of your buttonhole presser foot, insert the button and it will automatically stop the sewing machine when it reaches the required length of the buttonhole. However, things are a little bit trickier when you're working with different shape buttons. So in this case, to calculate the size of the buttonhole that you need, you need to take this the measuring gauge, measure first the length of the button and then the height of the button cap. Add these two measures together and this is the length of the buttonhole you need to stitch. Tip 9 and the final tip is calculating the distance between the buttonholes. Making sure that the buttonholes are equally spaced is very important part because if there is a mismatch it may be very visible and it will be drawing the eye to that difference. So what I like to use for spacing my buttonholes, first I take this expandable gauge and I just simply expand it to the width and number of buttonholes that I want to create. Now this tool is pretty accurate, but to make sure that it is exact, exact measurement that I want to do, I just go ahead and after I measure the buttonhole placement with this tool, I go ahead and measure uh, the distance between buttonholes using another seam gauge, which is a little bit more accurate and helps me is equally space out my buttonholes. Once the buttonholes are marked and you start sewing them on your sewing machine, on your presser foot you will see red lines which will help you align the beginning or the end depending on your sewing machine model of the buttonhole. So here are all the tips how you can create beautiful buttonholes and I use them to create this removable shirt collar that you see behind me. So I had the dress which had a little bit more open cleavage that I wanted so I decided to create this removable shirt collar and to slip under it and to create a completely different look of the dress and in this way I will be wearing this dress way more than without it. I will be sharing quite a few tutorials on how I made this removable shirt color on my Instagram so I will link it in the description box if you would like to see more uh, details about this project. Thank you for watching today and I will see you next time. Bye!